Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of Cloudera Evolve 24 here at Pier 59 in New York City. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, alongside my co-host and analyst, Bob LaLiberté. I'm excited about this next guest. We're going to be talking about the human genome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's always great to have customers on and hear their unique stories. Indeed. So with that, I'd like to welcome Stephen Horn. He is the staff data engineer at Illumina. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Your first time. My first time. Thank you so much for having me. What, your first time, but not your last, I'm sure. Yeah. Why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about the biotechnology company that you work for and a little bit about your career too and what you do there. Absolutely, so I work for a company called Illumina. We're a genomics company, so we actually build the technology that a lot of universities, research companies, and pharmaceuticals use to run and analyze DNA. So a lot of companies are getting into the genomics space, but we are the ones that actually build the technology. So a good example is with COVID-19. A lot of universities, a lot of governments need to be able to understand COVID, so we're the ones that design and build that technology. So with my role specifically, since at Illumina, we manufacture everything from scratch, all the way from our software to our hardware to the pure chemistry space, I support our manufacturing operations and our automation space. So my role in where I kind of grew up from, I grew up here in San Diego, down in San Diego, studied in San Diego, and Illumina is based in San Diego. So with my biotechnology and kind of self-learning the world of data, I ultimately applied all that knowledge into the manufacturing space where I support a lot of our automation initiatives within uh, Illumina. So a lot of our synthetic chemistry, a lot of our electrical engineering that we do to support building those products and building the physical machines and parts that support our customers. I oversee a lot of the data backend and infrastructure for that ultimately. Awesome, that sounds great. And I know from talking to you off camera, this is, uh, obviously you're at Cloudera. Yep. That involves, so you're a customer. You've been a customer for about four years, but you were part of the team who actually brought it on. So I'm wondering if you could just set things up for our viewers and talk about this was my environment before, this is why we, we brought Cloudera in, and this is where we are today. Yeah, so we moved very quick. Illumina has grown very rapidly over the past couple years, especially when it first started. So as you can imagine, when you're a fast moving company, you just got to get a lot of things out the door. So a lot of the problems we started finding right away when we moved too quick sometimes is we had a lot of different environments. We had a lot of unique lab softwares and within those lab softwares, they had their own operation system. They had their own databases. So you can imagine one software was running on a SQL server. One software was running on a Postgres. You can kind of name the list, it goes on and on. But as we kind of grew as a company and as we were trying to be more proactive with our data and being able to look back and see what improvements and automation we can bring for not just our customers, but internally within ourselves, when you're trying to cross all that data between one server to another software to another software, you can imagine that was a bit of a headache. So yeah. what we did with Cloudera was how do we take, still allow the uniqueness of our software. So we have a lot of software ranging from synthetic chemistry all the way down to semiconductor engineering. So not trying to remove that from our engineers and our chemists, how can we bring a platform that can unify all that data together? And we started that partnership with Cloudera where we can pull data from not just the cloud, but also from some of our on-prem lab software and unify that into one singular data repository. That way, anyone who wanted to analyze that data from a semiconductor space all the way to a synthetic chemistry space, they're ultimately able to grab that data from one place. The other advantage that brought to us is the total TCO of it. So, yep. so you can probably imagine when you have all these unique servers, all these licenses you have to pay for, all the maintenance, all the administrative work, and if one person leaves or a chemist that built this specific database leaves, you're kind of in a huge tech debt risk. So what we've been doing with Cloud Air the couple of years is unifying all that information. So ultimately, it's all sticking together as one uniform platform, but we're not removing or putting any constraints on the innovation that our chemists and engineers need. So how do we allow our chemists and our engineers to be innovative and move quick, but at the same time, build a technology around them to be successful where it's all staying in one place. And that's kind of what we did with Cloud Air when we brought that on a couple years ago. And now that cloud has become more popular and with the contributions we've done with Iceberg, that reality has been happening a lot faster and faster where we're getting a lot of good output, but also a lot of good cost savings. I want to talk more about Iceberg, but before we go there, yeah. just in your description of bringing in Cloudera, I mean, the benefits were clearly compelling. And yeah. as you said, it reduces the complexity, it allowed people to be more innovative, um, gave people a lot of their time back, but at the same time, bringing in a new technology can often uh, 
induce a sense of dread among <laughs> among teams because change is hard. Yep. I'm just curious if you experienced that and, and how you brought people along in, in, in this. Right, so the way we approached it culturally was it wasn't an enforcement, it was enabling. So one of the things we did with Cloudera was it was a utility. It's not a you have to use it, it's a big sandbox. And that's what we aim for with Cloudera, that's what we aim for our infrastructure was we understand that there's a lot of different ways to pull your data. There's a lot of different ways of analyzing your data. So what we did was we kind of brought more of an invitation of a sandbox mindset where you're basically giving an innovative chemist or an innovative engineer more toys to play with as you kind of steer them into that Cloudera space. So if you want to have access to 50 unique tools to do all these things you want, Cloudera has that and it's all within one box. So that's kind of what we did was we weren't trying to restrict anyone or force anyone into this tool. More than else, we were trying to enable the opportunity for someone to say, hey, you have a great idea. We have a lot of enterprise secured tools that you can use under your tool belt to get where you need to get to very quickly, but also in a very secured manner. And it's also supported by our enterprise space. So I think that's what made our chemists very happy and our engineers very happy. Of course, running any new tool is always very daunting. But the one thing that we've kind of made sure we established was we had this nice sandbox environment where if they made a mistake or something broke, it wasn't going to be anything bad. We kind of put in a place where they had the room to play. And as they kind of played, they were able to learn and then take that innovation even further. And with their innovation mindset, they were able to generate the stuff to make my life a lot easier and make our jobs a lot easier as the data side of this space. Got it. And I'm wondering if you can talk to any of the results that you've seen over these last four years. It sounds like there's a lot of, you're trying to run fast. So how has this helped organizations? How has it helped the decision making? How has it helped accelerate the innovation that you're trying to bring to market? Yes, so Illumina, we're always pumping new products. We're always generating new products, especially COVID was the perfect example where we definitely had to steer our focus to COVID-19, that was obviously the biggest topic for a lot of companies, especially for us to support those companies. So the nice thing when we were already having Cloudera go through that door was ultimately, we were able to move our technology very quick, develop and build things with all the unique tools such as Apache Spark, Apache Kafka, Apache NiFi, because we had all these tools readily available for us in an enterprise space sandbox, anything that needed a live streaming, anything that needed a more bigger data processing set, that tool was already there. We didn't need to rush out and procure any new tools. We didn't need to rush out and go buy new tools or negotiate new tools because we had everything all within one big utility. We were able to move quickly and say, hey, we're redoing our labs to support COVID. We need to be able to move quick to grab that data and also analyze that data. And having the availability to do that with those toolkits was what gave us the advantage to move quick and still operate very fast and meet timelines as well. So going back, what your, your expertise is in Apache Iceberg. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about, in a nutshell, what it is and what makes it so, so special? Yeah, so there's a lot of different ways to store your data ultimately. A lot of people store data traditionally in databases, but for us, we were running to that problem where we just had way too many different databases. And I know Hadoop, there's a way where you can ultimately share your data into files. So you can either store your data in a database that's owned by a company or a software, or you can store your data in files or in Excel spreadsheets. So Iceberg was something that was more in the interesting middle. Yeah. So imagine taking a bunch of Excel spreadsheets, but turning all of your Excel spreadsheets into a compression folder or file. So I know many people love Excel and use Excel for a lot of different things for analytical reports. Just imagine if you had 100 Excel reports or Excel spreadsheets, yeah. and you wanted that report to consume all those 100 spreadsheets in one single go. Iceberg is a way where we can store all of our data in a more compressible matter, more compression than Excel does. And then what's neat about this is many platforms can read from that singular file or pointer and read all those files and represent as a singular table. So instead of storing hundreds of Excel spreadsheets or relying on databases, just imagine your data stored in these compressed zip files where ultimately those zip files can act as one big table that's something like Tableau can use or Streamlit or any analytical engine can ultimately grab data from to support your business. Got it, got it. And so one of the things that I wanted to ask you about is your current environment now. You're trying to unify all your data sets. You've been scaling as a company, growing as a company. Obviously COVID was a big growth spurt for you. How much of that is located on-prem and how much 
is in the cloud and how does Iceberg help you manage that you know, disparate environment? Yes, so we manufacturing here over in San Diego and Singapore. So because we manufacturing thing, everything in Illumina, we do have a lot of on-prem. But right now we are planning to store all of our data in the cloud. And the nice thing with Cloud Air, with the hybrid technology that we're working with is we're still doing a lot of edge computation. So we do a lot of edge level computation but at some point, everything will route its way into the cloud for us. So okay. Apache Iceberg, what's really nice about Iceberg is that it can live anywhere. It can live on the Amazon Web Service S3, can live in Azure Blobs, can live in GCP, can even live on your own folders or your files or your own private system. That's what's really nice about Iceberg. Okay. Right now, the strategy we're taking is we're storing everything into S3 at some point, but the nice thing is that we're also able to do edge computation on-prem at the same time but as we're doing edge computation, we're able to streamline all that into Iceberg. So that way, anyone that's running something from Snowflake, anyone that's running anything from Databricks or from uh, AWS Glue, anywhere kind of in those platforms are able to grab from that single source of location. The other benefit of that too is kind of unifying one true space of storing that data. We had a lot of problems where one team would copy that data into this database, one team would copy this data into another system, then someone took another replica set of that data into that, and you can probably imagine when you have multiple replicas, 10 or 12 or more, you start losing that validity of that data, and then next thing you know, when you have a team meeting or a staff meeting, there's gonna be a lot of finger pointing very quickly of this data was wrong or this data got modified at this point and we had no way of tracking it. So yeah. we still wanna allow the on-prem edge computation that our chemists and our engineers want, but we're utilizing the hybrid route where at some point that physical storage of that data is going to live within one single point of the cloud. So we're still allowing that freedom, but everything will live in one true repository so everyone can both write and grab from the same spot. I'd love to get your take on trends that you're seeing in data management that are having an impact on the life sciences industry, particularly as so many biotechnology companies are integrating AI and ML into their systems. What, what are you seeing and what do you think we're going to be talking about at Cloudera Evolve 25? Right, so there are two areas that I am seeing. The first one obviously is the data lake, and the other one is AI. We can talk a lot about AI, and I'm sure hundreds of people can talk easily about AI, but around the data lake space, we're seeing an interesting mix where the biotech space requires a lot of SME knowledge. So the benefit that I have with my background is I studied biotechnology in universities, so I was able to speak the math, I was able to speak the science to our chemists and our engineers. But not all engineers can. Exactly. That's, that's the, that's the. And that is the weird problem we're starting to see right now where the technology is there and I think the capability is there, but how do we translate that middle ground between the people who know the business and the actual data engineers and data scientists? And we still struggle with that here at Illumina where we would love for everything just to seamlessly integrate, but unfortunately, as you all know, data is not always perfectly clean. Every company has their data mess. They always have their own individual unique problems. For us, we just work with a very niche set of data. We work with very deep semiconductor engineering data, same with our synthetic chemistry, all the way up to our genomics data. So you can imagine with all that wide range from our supply chain analytics all the way down to what was this purification of this exact product or how well did this machine run from point A to point B, because of the wide range of data, this trend we're seeing is, we're trying to see a one size fits all. So a lot of businesses are trying to sell the, everything fits in one big size, but unfortunately we need to continue having a more communication with our data SMEs to make sure that, yes, will the technology work? Absolutely, but how can we translate that from a business logic into an actual technical reality? And I think that's one of the conversations we're going to probably start seeing next year is, we can do it, but how do we make sure that with the right background and the right business approach to make sure that who we're talking to, developing that partnership with the folks who know their data very well and getting that into that ultimate data lake. So that way, not only are we storing the right data, but we're not storing junk data. And that's going to ultimately carry into AI. One of the things that we've been seeing in AI is the golden rule of junk in, junk out. If your data is not clean and you're capturing the wrong data, you're not going to get the right output. And that's, I think, one of the biggest punishers with AI is if you don't know what data you're grabbing from the root level, the output you're going to get from an AI or Gen AI's perspective 
is ultimately going to be very messy. So right. we follow that rule of junk in, junk out. So from a root level, I think capabilities there, but I think next year it's going to be a lot about talking about data SMEs as well as business logic, as well as how do we make sure we can connect to people who are not exactly data engineers or data scientists, but get that knowledge into our platforms. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. We both learned a lot from this conversation. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm Rebecca Knight for La Bob La Liberté. Please stay tuned for more of our live coverage of Cloudera Evolve 24. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in enterprise tech news and analysis. Yeah.